Since 1992, there has been an average of one death row inmate per year who, with DNA evidence, has been exonerated. Men who sat awaiting a time to die for a crime they never committed. On 9-21-11, I got the feeling that in Georgia, a man was hung by lethal injection. So I would like to have a moment of silence for Troy Davis. No, fuck that. Silence is what got us here in the first place. Let us instead shout out about race. Let us have conversations take place about 2008 when the great state of Georgia granted a last moment stay of execution on the last day for a confessed murderer who shot a former employer and finished a man's life with a crowbar. Do we have more leniency for those who admit mistakes than those who consistently suggest their innocence, even if they are perhaps innocent? Or is the truth written on each face? A white man receiving life, while a black man has his taken. 273 prisoners have had convictions overturned by DNA evidence since 1989. Six out of ten freed after being incorrectly convicted were black. Seven out of nine witnesses in the Troy Davis case recanted their testimony, all claiming phony statements were coerced by members of the Georgia State Police Force. In this case, you do not get clemency. Life imprisonment instead of a scheduled diminishment of faculties? No way. You get one stay and years later a delay by people who are too ashamed to kill you before eyes must be closed for sleep instead of wide open constantly trained upon the executioners. A moment to argue in front of the Supreme Court must have been for the cameras. This due process a step was 22 years in the faking. Which part defines expedient trial? Where is justice in witnesses' denial of testimony given without pressure? Sometimes, this is called tragedy. In inner cities, it's called Tuesday. In the same state of Georgia, African Americans make up 14% of current drug users, but 58% of drug-related convictions. I'm told, to stop seeing things in black and white. But I can only translate the reality that is set before me. Patriotism looks a lot like colonialism to me, and the majority of the riches have indecent lineages. How has someone of color been able to become a real estate mogul, when only recently would they have been able to buy land in higher neighborhoods? How would the poorest amongst us work to pay for their own college education, when they have to earn enough to buy their siblings clothes so their parents can pay rent? We expect so much out of people who live in situations we've never experienced. Whether they be black or white is not right. We're not right. We need to fight as one. You cannot be righteous when blind to persecution. How many cocktails will be injected in arms while we throw cocktails down gullets at bars? How many mules will be promised before we stop acting like jackasses and own up to our own word and the problems we allow? This is not just a failure of humanity. We already know people are imperfect, but this is a failure of the system. The system is supposed to have no attachment. The system is supposed to have no emotions. The system is supposed to be better than us. In addition to her blindfold, Lady Justice seems to need gauze pads perpetually replaced on her back. Those who set up the judicial system had first aid supplies to tend to the wounded lady in the form of appeals. For the system to work, we need to have faith that the overriding of mistakes is always possible. There is an appellate process for this reason, to correct the just injustices in justice's name. So we appeal to the Court of Appeals. We appeal and we kneel. We appeal and we claw. We appeal and we reel. We appeal and we fall. Solidarity is only useful when we can all still stand.